start to trickle in, we just want to welcome you. We are Smile Therapy Services. My name is Madison Myrick, Clinical Director. Um, and today we're going to have a presentation on ways to fill in the socialization gap by Ms. Tia Lorick and Tara Howard. Um, Tiara Howard is one of our newer therapists, so we're really, really excited to see what she um, has in store for us along with Tia. Um, just to give you some background, um, Smile Therapy Services, we are a mental health aid agency that provides outpatient therapy for children, adolescents, families, and adults um, to effectively develop and maintain positive self-concepts, improve communication interactive interactions, and to strengthen the family system. So we have a range of qualified um, counselors, social workers, uh, marriage and family therapists um, with a range of experience. Um, and so we're here with you today to focus on really how we can engage our students and our families and how to fill in this socializa socialization gap. Um, so we're really excited that we have our families and our parents um, joining us today. So welcome. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Miss Tiara and Tia um, to start us on our presentation. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Madison. So as Madison said, we're going to be focusing on ways to fill in the socialization gap. Um, so essentially, we're going to be talking about COVID's impact on the way that we're able to socialize with others, and then just some tips for um, coping and working through it. So um, the presentation is going to cover virtual learning, COVID's impact and support for parents, ways to feel connected to others, and then self-care tips for parents. Very important, those self-care tips. And also, I'm sorry, just to add, um, just to add a couple of ground rules before we get started. Um, I put them also in the chat. So feel free to look in the chat to refer back to them. Um, but we want to remind everyone that this is a safe space. So please feel free to come on here, let your hair down, um, but also be willing to gain as much information as you can. Um, you do have the option to when Tia or Tiara prompt any questions or any feedback, you do have the option to share in the chat that this chat on the side to your right, or you can um, use your mic as well and you will be able to unmute yourself. So be sure to unmute yourself to speak. Um, for additional questions or any concerns, we will address them at the end of the presentation, okay? So everyone enjoy. All right, back to you, Tierra. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I'm Tierra Howard and my colleague is Ms. Tia Lorick. Yes. All right, um, Beth and Madison, can you guys play a video? We're your super. What's the Wi-Fi? Pull up the Wi-Fi. Get the Wi-Fi. I tell you, even with Corona, he would have been safer at that school because I'm going to kill him at the house. So you telling me they, they want you to do online school and they ain't gave you no Wi-Fi? Open your mouth and speak up where she can hear you. What do you mean, how do you divide? You, you, you divide it, you break it up, you divide it. This virtual learning is supposed to come off my Wi-Fi or the school done, done sent a Wi-Fi. Ask her, don't ask me, I'm not your teacher. Ask her, she's sitting right there in front of you. Look on that computer and ask her. What did she say? Okay then. You better not be playing with me about this Wi-Fi. Cause I will, I will, hello? He hello, we, we are doing the virtual learning and we need some assistance, please. Is the school gonna drop you off a lunch or is that something I need to do too? Look at the computer and quit looking at me. Where's my cup at? Have you seen, oh, excuse me, Miss Williams. Say yes, ma'am. Miss Williams, Miss Williams, can you speak up just a little bit? We can't, we, we can't hear you. Speak up. He right here sitting at the computer. I should have sent him right on to that schoolhouse. No, you can't have none. Is it snack time in your class? Okay, do what you're supposed to do. Okay, what's... Thank you. 
So how many parents can resonate with that video? We could just <laughs> we could just have a couple parents to share out. You can write in the chat. Um, yeah, thanks, <laughs> Courtney. I thought that video was pretty hilarious also. And we could just write in the chat or you can unmute yourself and share out if you can identify with anything shared in that video. I would just like to say I'm so blessed that I did not have to go to school virtually because that would have been my mother standing behind me, denying me all types of juice, snack. <laughs> That's my mom. <laughs> yeah, I've actually witnessed that in one of my sessions and the, uh, the child was like, if they get something to eat and she's like, no, aren't you meeting with your therapist? Like <laughs> you eat later. <laughs> All right, did anybody, oh, oh, I can't see the chat. I do. It also points to the fact that not only your children are stressed, but our parents are stressed. Absolutely. Yes, I see that. It says OT, OT so on point. Trisha said, so true. So it seems that a few people can truly identify with this parent. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, thank you guys for sharing. We understand that virtual learning comes with many challenges, which actually brings us to our next slide. <laughs> what, um, what concerns have you had when it comes to virtual learning? And again, you guys can share in the chat or you can unmute yourselves and share out loud. <laughs> Trisha said that um, children logging into their classes or falling asleep. Um, and then Alana said, getting my youngest child to stay focused, probably during the day. Yes. Freedom said, children being virtually fatigued. So yes. just having too, too much simulation. Um, OT, my biggest fear is that I'm giving them too many answers and I'm not sure if I'm doing too much. So maybe trying to figure out like if they're really learning or if you're doing too much for them or, you know, whatever the case is in terms of learning. Right. Answers. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Next slide. Oh, not logging into their classes, Trisha said. Thank you, Trisha. Okay, so based on what we saw in the video and a lot of your responses, um, we can all pretty much agree that virtual learning is not an easy task. So some of the common parent concerns outside of some of the ones that you already listed, um, children fall behind academically. Um, I can't remember who said it, but someone mentioned feeling like they're giving their child too many answers and wondering if they're actually really learning. And that's a real concern. Um, you know, kids don't have that one-on-one -on -one, um, contact where they can just raise their hand and call their teacher over and ask for help. And we can do our best to try to help children in their learning, but the way that we were taught is completely different from the way that children learn today. So we don't always have the ability or the skill or even the patience to really support them the way that their teachers probably could. Um, another is reliable technology and internet to support learning. So you saw in the video, the woman was struggling with Wi-Fi and a lot of parents do, or even do you have enough devices to support all of the learners that you have in your household? Also balancing work and virtual learning, which is a big one. Um, parents still have to go to work. They have to be able to provide for their families while also now having the task of having to support their child academically and really just finding that balance and trying to figure out how you're going to make it work. That's a real concern that a lot of parents are facing right now. And in addition, you know, the children are struggling as well. Um, they have to figure out how to adjust to this virtual learning world. Um, they have to figure out how to navigate the platforms 
How do I log on? How do I find my assignments? How do I turn in my assignments? A lot of students are struggling with that. And then just a lack of engagement. Are they even enjoying learning at this point? Um, they don't have, you know, that one-on-one -on -one or that traditional group work where they can really engage with their peers. And a lot of them are struggling with the isolation or even you think about hands-on learners, like maybe that child who loved going to science class because they could do um, science experiments. And now that's been taken away from them and they're doing it virtually and it's not as fun and, and engaging. Um, in addition, social and emotional well-being, they've lost access to their teachers, they've lost access to their friends, students, school activities, all the things that children really enjoyed going to school for has now kind of been taken away. So you really want to consider how is this impacting my child? Next slide. And Tierra, we have some comments in the chat box. Ms. Ryder bringing up a good point. Her daughters are in college. So there's many, many students in the United States of all different ages now virtually learning. Um, Ms. Cook, Tabitha Cook says, I love it virtual learning. It gives me a chance to see how independent my daughter is. And she gets super excited when she sees and receives a, gr a great score upon completing her work. She meant, I love virtual learning. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Cook. Okay, so some tips for navigating virtual learning and supporting your child. Uh, the first is gonna be to set up a place for learning. You wanna have a place that is just for learning free of distractions. You know, when you think about when your kids go to school, they're, they're in an environment, they're in a classroom that has been catered to support their learning. Um, so you wanna kind of try to mirror that at home and it doesn't have to be, you know, super rigid and boring. You can be really creative. Um, teachers decorate their classrooms all the time to make it fun and inviting so that kids actually wanna engage in um, the learning activity. So you can try to incorporate some of those things in the environment that you set up at home as well. Also, you want to create structure, try to create a daily schedule. When they go to school, their day is mapped out um, from start to finish. And you want to try to create something that's similar. That way, when we finally are back in school, you know, they can just roll with the punches and it's not a, a shock to them the way that virtual learning has been. Um, also, communicate with your staff from your child's school. Share your concerns, share your ideas, ask questions. You know, reach out and let them know if you're having any issues or share with them some of the things that you've done to help you with virtual learning because they can either point you in the right direction of resources and support or they can take those testimonies that you provide and share them with other parents who may be having, um, who may be struggling with virtual learning. Um, contact your school's mental health team and additional for additional services. So a lot of the friendship schools have a DBH social worker or a smile therapist on site. And if you notice that your child is really struggling um, with coping with the pandemic or just virtual learning or anything that's going on, it's important for you to reach out to your school's mental health team because there are resources and support for you and your child. Um, also teletherapy. So whether it's for your child or, you know, if you know someone else's child who's struggling, who may not be at a friendship school, if you're struggling, if you know another parent who's struggling, um, you can reach out and teletherapy might be um, a good resource for you. So I've, we've included Smiles information and I encourage you all to go ahead and jot that down so that you have it on hand if you ever do decide to reach out and um, need those services. Also self-care, self-care is so important and it's gonna be one of the major things that's gonna help you get through this pandemic. And we're gonna go a little bit deeper into that later in the, in the presentation. And then finally, you wanna just try to stay positive because ultimately your kids are gonna to look to you to figure out how to navigate this whole virtual learning, how to navigate this pandemic and the social isolation. So if, if you know, if you're stressed and overwhelmed and frazzled, they're probably going to be stressed and overwhelmed and frazzled. So you want to um, try to stay positive and reassure them and let them know that everything's going to be okay. Next slide. So when I talked about um, creating a space for learning, these are some good ideas of things that you can do. Um, it's not distracting, but it's also very creative, very inviting, and it's similar to what a child would see in a school setting. It's just on a smaller scale. 
Next slide. If we can just have a few parents or anyone um, at their presentation to share how you've um, been managing your struggles during COVID or what are some challenges that you've been facing during the um, pandemic? Um, this is Candace Smith. I'm coming up as OT, but it's Candace Smith. Um, one of my biggest struggles was getting, my boys are now gaining weight because they're not able to go out and do have as much exercise as they were running around in the morning for the bus, running around in the evening for the bus. So they have been picking up weight and people have not been kind with their comments. Um, so I had to look up and start going and finding ways of fitness for them. So now we do fitness three times a week on YouTube and yoga on the other two days. So I can kind of incorporate a little bit of exercise for them. Thank you for sharing that. We also have in the chat box um, from Trisha, uh, husband unemployed for part of COVID-19. Yes, Candace, I can relate. So that's you know, something that's impacting so many Americans right now is the security of jobs and unemployment. And our heart goes to you, Tricia. Yeah, anyone else wanna share? <clears throat> Okay, so I think it's safe to say that the pandemic has affected us all in different ways. And this is something new for all of us. So it's new, it's challenging, it's difficult. Um, next slide, Beth. I'm sorry, do we have another comment? We did have another comment from Abby Greenwald. And Abby, you're more than welcome to go, you know, get off mute to kind of share more. But she said, one challenge here is that I feel like I'm the only recipient of my daughter's need for conversation. Oh, so the lack of social support, and I know Tierra and T are gonna go into that as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this pandemic has affected us in so many ways. Um, so now I would just like for us to just take a mindful minute and do have a breathing exercise. Thank you guys for participating in our breathing exercise. I hope you feel a little more relaxed after that. Next slide, please. <laughs> so as we talk about the change in our social environment and not being able to connect with our family and friends regularly, we come across some negative impacts um, from that change. And that includes stress, anxiety, depression, insomnia, emotional exhaustion, weight gain, as one of our parents just mentioned, and substance abuse. And next slide. And to support that, this chart shows adults who have reported symptoms of anxiety or depression disorder um, within the last few months of the pandemic. So I think the light blue represents symptoms of anxiety disorder, the medium blue represents symptoms of 
depressive disorder, and the last column would be anxiety or depressive disorder. And as you can see, um, the numbers have increased as the months have progressed. And this is from May to July. Um, I can just imagine what August and September would be right now, considering with the start of school, and even more so the, the latter part of the year with the holidays coming up. I can definitely see the increase in numbers. And the next chart just shows the, um, the number of adults who have experienced those symptoms that we just talked about. Um, and you can see that the US is the highest. However, Canada, UK, France, Australia, and New Zealand aren't really far behind. So it's affecting us worldwide. Next slide, Beth. So um, Tia just touched on some of the ways that on uh, some of the ways that uh, the pandemic has impacted us and everyone's responding and coping to it a little differently. So we want to say that it's important for you to pay attention to the signs. If you notice any of these changes in yourself or in your child, um, you might want to reach out to your school. Um, your school's mental health team, or even directly to SMILE um, and see what support is there for you. So I'll just go through a couple. So um, excessive worrying in your child or even in yourself. Um, a lot of people are worrying about work and finances and how they're going to support their families. And especially I can imagine that people are going to be worried about finances with the holidays coming up. How are they going to make the holidays work? And of course, everyone is worried about their health and the health of their loved ones. Um, you notice unhealthy changes in eating patterns and in sleeping uh, patterns. Maybe your child is returning to outgrown behaviors. So maybe they're throwing temper tantrums all of a sudden or they're bedwetting again. Um, they have difficulties concentrating or suddenly the things that they used to enjoy aren't enjoyable anymore. Or um, it's not uncommon for adults to increase their use of tobacco and alcohol and other substances when they don't know how to cope. And all of these are really common um, reactions when people don't know how to cope with the, um, a difficult situation. So it's important that you pay attention to these signs and know when to reach out for help. Oh, I see someone in the chat said refusing to sleep in their beds, which is a good one because maybe the kids are worried or fearful for whatever's going on. Maybe they just need that extra comfort during this time. So thank you, Candace. Next slide. So the World Health Organization has a lot of good information on coping with COVID. And I won't get too deep into these right here because we're gonna go a little further into, into them in the next slide, but I would encourage you all to take a picture, a screenshot, or even to go to the website after the presentation and maybe print these off and put them around your house because it's a really good um, resource and a guide to look back to when you or your child is um, dealing with any type of COVID-related stress. Next slide. So support for your child. Um, talk and answer questions about COVID. It's important that you're answering questions and helping them understand exactly what we're going through. You know, help them understand why they can't go back to school or why they can't spend the night at their friend's house anymore or why they had to have a virtual birthday party this year and couldn't go to, I don't know, Sky Zone. You know, help, help them understand what's going on and put it in terms that they can actually understand. And then share with them how you're coping with your own stress. Let them know that they're not alone. You know, we're all um, struggling to deal with this and just show them some of the things that you're doing to get by so that they can then um, follow in your footsteps and be a, a role model, eat well, get adequate sleep, exercise, like really let them know that this pandemic is not stopping anything. Like we're still gonna be productive. We're gonna be the best versions of ourselves and we're gonna continue to move forward and make the best out of the situation and limit their exposure to news and social media. So there's a lot of fake news out there and then there's also just so much news out there that sometimes it's all coming in. You don't know what to do with it all. Um, you don't know what to, how to respond to it all. 
and it just becomes overwhelming. So you definitely want to limit the exposure and have those talks like the first um, bullet says, have those, talk those talks with them so that you can share accurate information with your kids and they're not necessarily getting them offline. And then of course, help them practice self-care. Self-care is going to be major for getting you and your child through this time. Next slide. And then support for parents. Be easy on yourself. Understand and recognize that you are doing the best that you can in a tough situation and that no, none of us could have prepared for. So celebrate your efforts and the things that you're doing to, to get you and your family through this. Um, set daily goals. Try to stay productive. Join a support group. Facebook has a lot of good support groups for parents. Um, some is like the pandemic uh, parent support group. Um, I think another is like single a single parenting support group or support groups um, for children with special needs. So it's a lot out there and you can really um, research some of those and then find the ones that kind of fit what it is that you're experiencing and make sure that you join those so that you can get tips and support from other parents who are going through similar things. Uh, stay connected virtually. We can't go out with our friends and family the way that we want to anymore, but we can still do creative things to stay connected and not feel so isolated during this time. Also consider what you're reading and watching. Again, you don't wanna overwhelm yourself with so much information about COVID. Switch it up, uh, watch a funny movie or binge watch something on Netflix. You don't wanna continuously pay attention and um, watch things that are gonna add to your stress. Uh, develop a sleep schedule, and then also connect with community or faith-based faith -based organizations. Next slide. So some things uh, we want you guys to keep in mind is that your feelings and concerns are valid. You're not alone. You're not the only one who's experiencing this, um, who feels the way that you do. And just in general, you're not alone. We are here to support you. Um, you're doing the best that you can in a tough time. This is only temporary, so this is not forever. We're gonna go back to school at some point. We're gonna be able to socialize with our friends and family at some point. So just keep in mind that this is temporary. This is not forever. Um, you wanna focus on the things that you can control and support and resources are only one ask away. So there is support and resources out there for you, people who wanna help you. You just have to be willing to reach out and ask. Next slide. With the outbreak of the novel coronavirus, our daily lives have changed dramatically. We're being encouraged to stay home and keep our distance from other people. These are crucial steps we must take to prevent the spread of the coronavirus. But if you're finding social distancing and self-isolation challenging, you're not alone. Lack of social interaction can make us feel lonely, isolated, or depressed. If you're feeling this way, it's important to reach out to others for support. Many people are struggling with the same feelings and are eager for a connection. After all, we're all in this together. Here are a few ways to stay connected to others during the coronavirus outbreak. Stay social from a distance. Use technology to keep in touch with loved ones over the phone or video chat, and try talking with your neighbors from a safe distance over fences or balconies. Schedule regular check-ins. Routine chats with loved ones can give you something to look forward to and give your day structure. Make connecting with other people a regular part of your week. Strengthen relationships with those around you. Many of us are home with family members, partners, or roommates. If you live with others, focus on strengthening your connections with them. Organize virtual hangouts. Try organizing group activities such as knitting, cooking, or board games that can be done over video chat. Be creative. Be kind, supportive, and generous to others however you're able. Showing kindness and support to others not only helps them, it can also increase your sense of purpose and well-being. Remember that just because we need to be physically distant right now doesn't mean we should be socially isolated. Strengthening existing connections and reaching out to others is crucial for our mental and emotional well-being. 
If you're struggling to cope with social isolation, reach out to loved ones, contact a mental health professional, or consider calling a mental health hotline. So um, these are just some of the various ways that you guys are, are various things that you guys can do to stay connected. And we've just included some other um, fun and creative things like a fitness class. Like one of the parents talked about um, her and her sons are working out three days a week and they're doing it together. But that can even be something that, you know, you invite your family and friends in on and you guys can have like a virtual fitness class. A lot of people are actually doing that now. Um, create a social group, like a book club, sewing club, knitting clubs. Me and my friends, um, you know, they've added all these uh, shows on Netflix now. So me and my friends, we binge watch an entire season. And then once we all finish the season, we'll all have like a group FaceTime call and just laugh and talk about everything that was on the season. And we love it. So that's something that you guys could do as well. Um, game nights, uh, movie nights, or online support groups. Yeah, I've also had, um, I've just had a family game night, actually, and I did, I have a few movie nights with my girlfriends. We've had virtual happy hours, we've had um, just virtual girls night that we just get together and talk, so it's been pretty, pretty fun. Scary movie nights, yes. Me and my best friend are having a scary movie night soon. <laughs> <laughs> My, I have friends, my daughter and friends, and I, we all color. I've all, we've all gotten to coloring and we do, um, I went on Amazon, they have an array of adult coloring books, anything you can think you want to color, they have it, crayons, markers, um, and that's very relaxing. And sometimes if I'm able to, I'll do a little coloring in between teaching with the boys just to give my, my I call it a brain break. That's a good idea. And people have gotten so creative. Like you see these drive by um, baby showers and gender reveals. I've been to a couple uh, virtual birthday parties and going away parties. And um, I even, my um, me and my mom attended, I want to say like two virtual wedding ceremonies. So you can get really creative during this time. Just because we're isolated physically doesn't mean that we can't act with others. Right. Madison just shared in the chat. Um, she said, while the weather's still nice, even having a socially distanced picnic so we can still see each other face to face. So I like that idea also. OK, so I know I know with a lot of our kids, if not all of our kids are having a really difficult time of not being around their friends and classmates during this time. So here are some tips that can help them to navigate through this process. Um, so, so as we just talked about, encourage spending time with friends virtually or in person with COVID-19 guidelines. I know a few of my um, kids have been to the park a, a lot of times. Um, that's a good socially distance activity, having virtual play dates. Um, provide reassurance at home and just Kind of praising the child when they do really good in class. If you notice that um, they woke up on time, got themselves ready for school, and attending class on time, it's like, I really saw that you were really interested in your music class today. Like, tell me more about that. So really praising them and encouraging them for doing their best during this time. Um, have them to talk about their feelings and concerns because, I mean, it's real. We're all having a difficult time. So definitely, um, tapping into how they feel also. Um, create fun and daily activities that can be done as a family. We just talked about some of those things, coloring, painting, having game night, doing TikToks, <laughs> doing fun things. Um, stay in touch with family and friends and get some fresh air, which is really important. Sun helps a lot. So having a picnic that Madison just talked about, even just taking a walk around the park, I mean, around the block or going to the park, which is really good. Next slide. And here are just some resources that can help during this time. I think the link is, if I'm not mistaken, um, Tierra, the link is 
Is it at top? Is it on top or is it on each? You're mute. I am. Okay, um, it's on top and it's at the bottom under open with COVID-19, uh, the workbook. So okay. they're both linked in there. So there's an activity book that has some couple things that you can either print out or even if you can't print them out, you can just kind of duplicate it on your own paper. And the next is 10 ways to build a relationship with kids. So two things that I liked on this um, handout was number two, which is let, let them teach you about their interests. So I know a lot of my kids have taught me a lot about the games that they like. Roblox and Fortnite is really a thing right now in school. And not, I'm asking my kids, like, what is that? What do you do? How do you play? But they're really into it. So I think it's good to um, just, just know more about your child's interests so that they can teach you. And also, um, number 10, so apologize when you mess up. So we're human, right? We're not perfect. We mess up too. So just kind of acknowledging that you you didn't do your best, and but you will try better next time. So it helps the child know that you're human and you're not perfect either. And it also helps them to know that you're not always putting the blame on them. Like mommy's human too. And some of the things that I like is number three, remembering things about their lives. So I have a little sister, she's 10, and she tells me all about, you know, her school and her little friend group drama. And, you know, we'll have a conversation about it. And then the next time I see her, I'll bring it up and try to figure out like, okay, how did you handle that? What was the outcome? And just remembering that she even mentioned, or, you know, even just remembering her friend's names. Those are things that I try to... Um, keep in mind so that me and her can kind of strengthen our uh, relationship and then also doing crazy things so she loves TikTok she loves all the dances and she's like oh Tara do you know how to do this dance and I'm like no show me so that's something that we've been doing um, during the pandemic she'll learn the dance and then she'll teach it to me and then we'll do our little TikTok together So we want to invite you all to answer this question or to share. You can drop your response in the chat. But we just want to know what are some uh, things that you and your family have done to stay connected to others during the pandemic? And one of our parents just shared earlier that her and her family color. So I think that's a really good thing. Beth said every Saturday night it's family movie night at the Kim's household. I love that. <laughs> Courtney said do group FaceTime for girls night or family time. Ms. Johnson just said virtual versus party. Yes, love the versus party. <laughs> Kanisha said, we'll be doing a virtual pumpkin carving competition. I love that. Ms. Ryder said, every Sunday we have a virtual dinner from my mom's house. That is so nice. I love that. Yes. The wineries are nice with social distancing. I still want to visit one, Courtney. <laughs> I haven't tried yet. <laughs> All right. Okay. Freedom said we just started watching the Bible project together and want to start playing games weekly. Nice. Thank you guys for sharing. These are some really good ideas. Okay, so we've been, you know, kind of discussing self-care throughout the entire presentation. So we want to dig a little deeper into what self-care really is. So if someone were to ask you, do you take care of yourself? Naturally, most of us will be like, of course, of course I take care of myself. But then they ask you how. And that answer gets a little bit more complicated. And you really have to sit back and think like, how am I really taking care of myself? What are the things that I do to care for myself? And the answer to that how is most likely your self-care practice, um, what your self-care routine looks like. So the definition of self-care that we've come up with is that self-care is any deliberate activity done with the intention of caring for any of the various areas of your well-being. 
So a lot of times when people talk about well-being, you know, they might mention uh, physical or emotional. And why I really love this graphic is because it brings light to some of those other areas of our well-being that sometimes we often ignore. So I'll just go through a couple of these and I will also encourage you guys to um, screenshot these so that you can really take a look and um, evaluate how you're taking care of yourself in each one of these areas. So for physical, um, what are you putting into your body? What are you eating? What's your nutrition look like? Uh, what's your fitness routine look like? A emotional, um, do you like journaling when you need to express um, your emotions or what's your stress management look like? Do you go to therapy? Social, uh, what's your support system look like? Uh, who are the people that you keep around you? What are your friends like? And who are you deliberately choosing to be in your friend group? Um, also, what you watch on social media is a big one. Are you um, including like positive things in your feed or, you know, what does your feed look like? Uh, spiritual, what is your time alone? How much time do you spend alone to really just look within yourself? Or do you like to meditate? How often are you praying? Uh, personal, what are your goals? And what are some of the things that you're doing to achieve your goals? Uh, what are your hobbies? Um, how are you being creative? Your space, what's your safe space look like? And what are you doing to make sure that your safe space is a stable space for you? And the financial is a big one. Um, what's your money management look like? Are you saving? Are you setting boundaries for your spending habits? And then finally work. So how much time are you spending at work? And um, are you taking the necessary breaks that you need? That could be, you know, your hour lunch or your 30 minute lunch, or even um, taking off of work uh, ever so often to really just give yourself a break from work. Are you doing these things? So um, I invite each of you to look at each of these areas and really ask yourself, what are you doing to take care of yourself in each of these areas? You can go to the next slide. So that's gonna bring us to our next activity, which is the self-care cup. So thinking about the things that we just went through and the different areas of self-care, I wanna ask, how are you filling your cup? So if you had to fill your cup with everything that's in your self-care routine, what would go in it? So we just ask that you all take about a minute to think about that and then you guys can either share by unmuting yourselves or you can drop your self-care routine in the chat. It's Candace Smith again. I'm a slow tech. I'm a slow texter. But what I like to do is get up an hour before it's time for the boys to wake up. And I take that time to do a walk for 30 minutes, shower, come in and get ready for my day with the boys. That really helps for my self care. That's awesome. Thank you, Miss Smith, for sharing. Beth said she loves having coffee each morning, making art in the evening. Kanisha said, I fill my cup with some ginger tea in the morning and funny podcasts. Love that. Courtney says, I journal every day. Let's call so fast. Courtney says, I journal every day, sometimes twice a day. Love something warm in the morning, coffee or tea. Also love to ready fall off a little, well, ready, fell off a little bit, but getting back on it. Madison said, I fill my cup by enjoying spending time with my toddler and end the day with a hot bath or shower. Yes. Ms. Friday said, I walk every day, laugh at Shuler King, pray, talk to my family members, and FaceTime with my granddaughter. Madison said, also home decor. Yes. Ayana says, journaling, Zumba music, Facebook, hot shower, Hulu, and Netflix. It's okay, Courtney. Abby says, I try to control clutter in the house. Okay. 
I miss one. Oh, and volunteer and watch comedy. Yes, thank you everyone for sharing out. Oh, one more person, Freedom says, I use the Joy Doodle app for virtual drawing, take pictures, nature walks, bake and Netflix. You guys have some really great things in your cup. So if you're not sure where to start for developing a self-care plan, this is kind of a self-care guide that will help you. Um, and we have a quote from Lady O that says, you don't have anything to give that you don't have. And so you have to keep your own self full. That's your job. So the first thing is to evaluate, you know, areas of improvement in your life that Sierra just touched on. Ask yourself what makes you feel good about yourself and that peace. Um, brainstorm ideas of things you can do to improve yourself. Set goals for yourself, um, which a lot of you have already done with your fitness routines and daily morning and evening routines and evaluate your self-care routine every few weeks. Maybe you realize I'm kind of slacking in this area, but I've really been giving a lot of attention to this. So maybe you need to make some adjustments. And the last one is adjust as you go. I think if there's anything that we've all learned during this time is adjusting and being flexible. So definitely, if you don't stick to your routine, give yourself some grace, but just keep on going. Next slide. And here's one more activity that we have for you guys. Um, we would like you to share out how you will commit to, you, to take care of yourself. So just share out one or two things of how you will commit to take care of yourself. Exercise. Amen to that one, Abby. Ayana said, drink more water, which I love. I'm trying to get to like a, a gallon a day. Yeah, I'm trying to. So. <laughs> Um, Candace said, I would like to give myself a bubble bath a day. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. um, Beth said, get more sleep. Work on not watching scary movies at night. Yes, I cannot watch anything scary at night. It has to follow with something funny. <laughs> um, Cheryl said, I have gotten my daughters involved in walking each day. They hold me accountable. Yeah, that's so important, having an accountability buddy mm -hmm. when it comes to exercising. Mm -hmm. Sarita also likes the idea of drinking more water. Freedom, uh, a weekly facial and body scrubs. Love that. Mm -hmm. Skincare routine is everything. Um, taking time away from electronics. Absolutely. Yes. When I see my little um, weekly view of how long I've been on my phone. I'm like, oh no, I got to put it down. So that's <laughs> a good one. And then someone else also, a Shanae also agreed with drinking more water and exercising. Good ones. Thanks, guys. Nice. So these are just some resources for you guys. I believe you guys will get this information after the presentation, but um, CDC has information. Um, the Department of Behavioral Health also has information. I think they have workshops and things that are current right now so that's a great resource as well and smile therapy services currently has a parent support group that we would love for you guys to attend i think you can check the website to register or reach out to one of your therapists at the school and they can help you to register for the but support group please tell other parents um it's a really great outlet it's really um helpful to our parents Thank you, Abby. Be glad that you enjoyed it. Oh, so 
Thank you, Tia and Tiara, and if everyone can go off mute and give them a round of applause, because I know presenting sometimes is really nerve wracking, but they did a great job. But yes, thank you. Thank you. you. Did awesome. Great job. Yes. All right, thank you everyone. Um, thank you, Beth, for monitoring the chat and guiding us. Um, and thank you, Tia and Tiara, you guys did an excellent presentation. We hope that um, our parents uh, were able to uh, get a couple of nuggets from this and use this with their children and with your families um, and kind of start uh, off it either end your week in a positive note um, with these additional tips or start next week whenever, whatever works for you all. But we hope that this was very useful information to you today. Very so, good. So much. And thank you, Ms. Ryder, for giving us these opportunities as well. Thank so, you. I would love to do another paint. Uh, we had a, I think it was Beth that did that with us. That yeah, was the so paint. Relaxing. Uh -huh. Yes. I want to yes. do something like that in the very near future with our parents. Okay, we can definitely set that up. Okay, very good. All Thank right. you, ladies. Okay, everyone, bye. have a great afternoon. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye.